Welcome back. So, uh, this was the last uh, slide uh, where we were talking about uh, the phenomena of leg fraction, which was observed in uh, 2001 Bhuj earthquake. And as I told that uh, in most of the region, which was uh, we can say the low lying regions uh, with near surface saturated. Uh, soil liquefied during 2001 uh, Bhuja quick ground shaking. This ground shaking was quite intense and as I told that the people, uh, local people they believe that uh, this is the time when, when there is a revival of or rejuvenation of the ancient river which used to debouch in this region and the name the Saraswati. So, this was the epicentral area and I will show a couple of uh, uh, slides what we recorded after the earthquake, the ground deformation in this region and also uh, in this lecture I will show uh, the lake faction features which we observed and noticed from uh, the great run of Kutch. So, mostly the hard rock area uh, of course, also experience severe shaking because the epicenter was not so far from this region. But this whole area, uh, most of the, uh, uh, the cities and the towns uh, were devastated. So, this was the, uh, the data which was been captured after 2001 Pocha uh, earthquake. This shows uh, in particular the region south of uh, the main rocky uh, land that is the mainland Kutch and this region is your uh, bunny plains which shows uh, the lake faction in run and bunny plains. These are the pictures from uh, uh, New Madrid, uh, the earthquakes which were been triggered in 1811 and uh, 1812 in US. And this, uh, this is the picture aerial photograph which we took after the 2001 Bhuj earthquake in Gandhidam area. So, this is the coastal uh, uh, region and most of the areas and this what you see is all are the tidal channels and the, the square white squares which you see is the salt agricultural field. So, this is a, uh, salt pans which uh, people very commonly do for the producing the salt. So, this all black patches which you see here is the sand boils which uh, developed at the time of uh, during the ground shaking and the whitest patch are from the, uh, the photograph which was taken after the 1811. Now, these two earthquakes have been com com compared because uh, till date we consider that the, uh, the Kutch region is the region of stable continental region where uh, which is sitting away from the uh, seismically most seismically active zone like Himalayas. This were the sand blows as I was talking on that day that this typically resembles uh, a volcanic cone and then along with that we also see the formation of longitudinal fissures. Uh, and these features were also instrumental in pouring out the liquefiable sand as well as water which was present close to the surface. You can see the wide fractures or the fissures which were been formed, they were full of water, full of water. So, the terrain of Great Ran of Kutch is uh, uh, very hostile and very flat region, mostly you do not see. Uh, uh, anything in this region uh, except uh, the, the small bushes which are which are growing otherwise it is completely uh, a flat terrain uh, comprised of very fine uh, tidal deposits. Now, this road is of course, uh, recently constructed mainly for the 
movement of BSF Jawans and these are the pictures from uh, great run of Kutch and in some locations where we do not have road we need to move on the, uh, the marshy land. So, this picture if you see uh, uh, I put myself as a scale to show the, the dimension of the sand blow. So, this is the, the sand blow uh, which was before before this be, be like before excavation we were not aware whether uh, this is a sand blow or not, but as I was showing one one picture that uh, from Gandhidam and New Madrid where uh, we were able to see some white patches or the white dots. So, this is very much similar to that. So, there is a difference between the color of uh, this surface and the sand which is sitting here. So, that what uh, prompted us that most likely uh, this is an sand blow and the recent event uh, which was triggered uh, uh, was 2001. So, this field we did in 2005 and 6 where we encountered this uh, features. So, this is close to the, uh, the Alabund epicentral area. So, finally, what we decided that if really this is in sand blow, then we should see some uh, liquefaction features. Hence, we started digging at, uh, at some locations and of the same sand blow and what we found was a beautiful contact between the, uh, the surface or the top soil or the sediment succession and the alien sand which is which came from below. So, you can see the dimension is quite wide and that resulted into the pouring out of this whole uh, sand uh, boil which we or the sand blow which we have seen. It is more than 2 meters in diameter. So, this was not the only one conduit or the dike. Uh, through which the sand was poured on the surface because of the increase in pore water pressure. So, you please remember what we discussed in the previous lecture that the ideal conditions uh, for the uh, for triggering the liquefaction is the uh, cohesion cohesive less sediments 1. So, what we decided that uh, uh, to dig and the, this was the exciting moment for us to see uh, the alien sand uh, having contact with the, uh, the, uh, the near surface succession. So, this sand is definitely uh, which has which came up from subsurface. So, if we if we just put the sketch here of this section what we see is that we have the horizontally laminated succession uh, which is definitely in tidal succession we have and then the sand which is sitting here is something like that. Okay. So, this sand is probably coming from or not probably we can say that this is coming from some sur subsurface the sand sitting here and this whole area is your tidal sediments. So, this was one important uh, finding which uh, uh, we saw and this is good for the understanding that what exactly happened during the liquefaction apart from what we used to see in the textbook. So, what we need to have the ideal conditions for this is one is we need to have a uh, the cohesive less the uh, sediments and B water saturated. So, this is two very important uh, point which uh, we need to keep uh, in mind and of course, the another important point which I will come later is the overburden. This is again an important point that is the, the overburden which is what I am talking about is the uh, suppose we have uh, the non liquefiable layer okay, either this clay and then we have a liquefiable layer here 
and maybe it is also sitting on the top of the unliquefied layer. So if this is a section we have and this portion is water saturated, then chances increases of having the liquefaction. But at the same time, if the thickness of this is large, okay, greater than the, suppose we put this as an H1 and this is H2. So if the thickness of H1 is greater than uh, H2, then in that case, the liquefaction chances become little meager. So if H1 thickness is greater than H2, because it will not be able to break this unit in that case. So this we will talk later. So let's see a few more examples from uh, uh, the great run of Kutch, how it looks like. So this is a section. So this portion which you see is the the plan view, uh, um, and and the horizontally, and this is the vertical section. So you see in big uh, from this is the conduit which is coming up and then getting up vertically here. So very huge sand of uh, uh, blow which is which was been observed here, and this is the contact between the laminated sequence here which I was showing in the previous one and the sand which is coming. It's a pure sand which is which has been poured out on the surface. Definitely this also indicates that there is this is all a river ion deposit uh, or the flood plain deposit which was deposited by then existing mighty weavers. This is another uh, picture of the same trench so where you can see the contact in the horizontal on the flat surface and then vertical surface over here. So very thick sand which was then poured. So uh, what we found was, uh, so this was not only the one sand blow, we were having multiple sand blows which were been observed in this particular region. So as I told that uh, uh, if you have an ideal condition, then you can have the liquefaction even at the magnitude of 5.5. But the uh, the the shape or the size of the 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 sand blows itself indicate that the magnitude was much higher than 5.5. So there is another uh, relationship and the studies which have been done, which also tells about that what will be the the size or the dimension of the liquefaction uh, structures or the features depending on the magnitude. That is another uh, point which is important. Now, uh, before um, I go to the further detail, one important point which I would like to mention here that this area, because it is absolutely no, no uh, habitation, no, no one stays here because of its hostile condition and uh, uh, the completely flat area, no damage or it was, it, there was no hazard because of the, the liquefaction here. But if similar uh, terrain is there where we have thick population or the area is thickly populated, then uh, this phenomena or the process is a matter of worry. So what we did was uh, another uh, uh, a typical exercise. We we collected the samples uh, from uh, uh, the sand blows, and we, uh, we 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 are planning to date the samples, which will tell us that when exactly this liquefaction took place. And of course, the date will be close to 2001. Another feature which we found was again a very interesting one that. Uh, we, we, we saw a sort of a mole track and then initially we thought that this is an insect burrow or some animal which traveled through this might have created this burrows and all that. But this was, uh, we were able to see uh, such fine cracks and then raised up land here or the material along this line for kilometers. Then we decided why not to uh, have the see the section and then what we did was that we open up a very small trench which clearly indicated that this is a feature related to the sand dikes. So the previous one which I was showing was sand blow. 
the feature which we, we saw was circular and in some areas I was showing the photographs which was been taken something like this and then at the center we were having the cone the typical cone structure okay. so this is another so sand blows but this one these are the dikes actually so an interesting thing which we found was that this dikes showed us an uh, fragments which were been broken from this soil so close up of that if you see here what we see is this is the contact between the laminated sequence here pure sand coming here and then in between this within the conduit we have some broken fragment close up of that if you see is this one here so these are some broken fragments of the soil the capping soil so these are all disoriented I'm, I'm talking disoriented in the sense if you see here we see the laminations which are seen almost horizontal over here so these are all disoriented fragments broken fragments which were been carried within the dike when the there was a sand movement so this is a typical example to prove also to show that this was this material that is the sand is this came up from the the surface or, or from, from the unit which was sitting far below from the from the surface and it broke the the overlying units this is another example from the same trench uh, which clearly shows the, the disoriented fragments now uh, the the factors which i was talking apart from the strong ground shaking so one you have the ground shaking uh, because of the uh, the earthquake second is the water saturated sediments and water saturated sediments should be near uh, surface but of course we we also talked one in one of the uh, the slide in the previous lecture that liquefaction can also take place in the deeper part but that may not reach right up to the surface so it will be uh, it will die out in form of silts and then we should have cohesionless or cohesiveless sediments which are loose granular sediments so if you see the basically what happens is So this is the uh, the photograph uh, which was taken after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and if you watch the movie again, you will be able to see that house which uh, which has been shown here in the sketch. So basically, what uh, these are the three factors which we are we have listed here are important. So you need to have a very strong ground shaking so this is an ideal condition for the liquefaction loose granular sediments and water saturated sediments so as soon as the pore water pressure increases it will result into the loss of shear strength of the uh, cohesion cohesive less sediments which will result into uh, the phenomenon of liquefaction thank you so much